Hello, hello everyone! I'm Fernando and I want to give you a warm welcome to my channel and to the competition which is the Conceal Teacup. I'm the main organizer for this tournament and since registrations are almost opening I decided it was quite important to do a small video for both viewers and participating players to get to know what the Concealed Cup is, uh, how is it going to be played, how are the matches, how are the setup, how, are, how is all the logistics. Has someone asked in the comments of the trailer what is the role of the teacup in, the, in, in this tournament? So I made this small video that hopefully can answer some of these questions. Uh, the number one and most important question is, okay, what is this tournament, what is this event? The Casil Teacup is a tournament I'm organizing in Age of Empires 2, a game that I absolutely love. Uh, the concept is inspired by T90's Hidden Cup, and my goal is to bring the, the same experience that the pro players have of competing in a tournament, of having their matches be watched, someone casting, you know, all the excitement that comes from a, a real esports environment, and bring it to a more amateur level. Uh, one of the key components of the Concealed Key Teacup is that it's made by amateurs and for amateurs. We will do our best to be entertaining, to be professional, to try to, to try for everyone to have a great time, but at the end of the day, never forget, if you are a participant or a viewer, that the number one goal of this cup is for us all to have fun. And the concealed nature of this cup is quite particular, because at the start of the round of 16, uh, part of the tournament, players will be given a hidden name, a hidden identity. It doesn't matter what your username is, you will be competing under the name of a tea brand and a tea, tr a tea type. And I won't know who the players are, I've prepared a lot of logistics behind the scenes to ensure that I do not know which player is which, and the viewers won't know which player is which. So this is kind of a... Uh, a guessing game at the same time that it's a Joe Empires competition where we'll, we will be trying our best to figure out which player is which. Now, how does this all proceed? How, how do I ensure that everything happens? That's what I'm going to answer and I, before advancing I want to also make one more comment. Uh, the registrations are opening but things are being prepared for the tournament. Uh, I'm not a static creature, things are dynamic, things are changing, so if you have any comment, if you have any question, if there's something in the um, regulations or the rules that's not clear, please feel free to ask. I'm going to produce more content, I'm going to answer more questions. Uh, my goal is to make everything clear, this video is just a small step towards that direction, but it's not the end. If you want more information, please feel free and, uh, to ask and I will do my best to provide. To make everything easier for both the players and organization, I took the time to prepare a, a rulebook, a guide of the regulations for the Concealed Teacup. The main goal is, if you have any doubt, there will always be a guideline, a, a book that will help you. This is supposed not to be super formal, not to make you become very bored with reading all that I, that I wrote. No, the goal is to inform, to help you, to make sure you don't have any doubt and that there's always a document that you can consult for any questions. And for my presentation today of the cup, this will be the perfect resource to help me show you how I structured this tournament. Uh, here you can see the table of contents for the document. I start describing the spirit of the competition, rules and guidelines, some key points, this is an important section if you don't want to read everything of the document and you can see that it details how the drafts work, how the tournament stages will be structured, how we will communicate in the tournament. But to start I'm going to present you with the schedule. Uh, here you can see the most important dates for the Concealed Teacup. Um, as you can see the next week will be focused on the registrations. If we have over 16 players we will have um, qualifier round, uh, it will be a best of three and the 16 players who are qualified will have a place in the concealed teacup. Then we have the tournament draw where I introduce the players, the names will be given behind our backs, we won't know which player is which. 
and then we will do the tournament draw where we define the pairings. The matches will not be played live, uh, that's why there's a, a difference between the time for the matches to be played and the time for the streams. I want players to arrange the best time for for both of them and then they just submit the replay and I will be using the replay forecasting. I will try to make the final match happen live, it will be more entertaining if, it, if that happens, but um, if the players can't arrange a good time for the stream and everything, there's no problem in also making the final match be the casting of a replay. These particular dates are of even more importance if you are considering playing in the tournament. If you register, please make sure that you will have free time to play in this time period. Of course, unpredictable things can happen, and if for some reason you won't be able to play or you foresee that you will need to drop out of the competition, please contact the organization as fast as possible. Everything can be solved, everything can be arranged, we are all amateurs, we are not expecting full commitment, even pros sometimes need to ban competitions, but communication is the key. If there's anything happening, please send an email as soon as possible, please communicate, but yeah. If you want to register, try to have these dates available for playing the games. Now you might be wondering, okay, if I want to schedule matches with my opponent, how am I going to do it if my identities are supposed to remain hidden? And that's why at the organization we prepared a way to make players be able to communicate both with me, the, the main organizer, and, uh, and each other without revealing their identity. And first, the staff members who know which player is which are going to give you um, a link to a Google document via email. Upon accessing this Google document, you see here an example, um, one of the main advantages is that Google documents can be edited by anyone without, uh, without using your identity. You can access this in private browsing and I won't know which Google account was used to edit the document. So you will know your tournament name, if you want to write something in chat, you just need to type your name. And then you are free to write whatever message you require. Uh, it will be complicated if the players had to discuss every little detail. Are, are you free at this time? Are you free at that time? So I already prepared in this document a schedule where players are supposed to... This is the first thing that you should do when you get paired. You open the document, you mark whichever dates you are available and that will make it easier for players to spot Okay, this is a good time for both of us to play. If you can't arrange a schedule within the, the determined days, please communicate, please bring things to the attention of the organization and we will try our best to make arrangements for everything to work. Matches are supposed to be played together in a best of five set or a best of seven, but if both players agree, okay, we both don't have a lot of time, today we play match one, tomorrow we play match two and three and the next day we play match four, I'm completely fine with it. Uh, the more concise things are, the better for the tournament environment, but the needs of the players always comes first. That's my spirit in organizing this. Uh, the tournament also includes uh, drafting and banning civilizations and the map pool, and we've prepared a, a final part of the, of the document that helps with this process. Ideally, you should do the draft and ban stage like 30 minutes before the start of your matchup, but once again, the players are the ones in charge. If you are, and your opponent are like, we don't have time, let's do this over over the course of the next days, and then when we reach the match, we are we already know what, what is banned and what is big. Fine by me. Uh, regarding the map drafts and civilization drafts, um, we've prepared everything in detail in the document. It explains what maps are available, what's the order that you ban and pick maps, and the goal of this is basically to ensure diversity in the tournament, that you pick players pick different sieves for each map, the, the matches are played in different maps, and it's also a strategic decision. You can try to pick the maps that you are more comfortable with. Some matches will be on forced maps, for example, this shows the best of five, and the first match of a best of five set will always be played on Arabia, and then um, the next matches will be played on the map chosen by the losing player. And the pool of maps for the 
uh, losing player to choose will be picked before the game starts. The same happens for civilizations. Players are able to ban three civilizations each, and then they pick a pool of civilizations, and that's the civilizations that you will be able to use in the tournament. This will ensure that matches are more entertaining, that you get to play with different sieves, that you don't get frustrated by playing against the same strategy time and time again, because play players will need to adapt, they will need to vary their playstyles. For those who've watched um, Age of Empires 2 tournaments, this process is, is well known, and the document explains the steps in greater detail. If you need more explanation, I can do um, a follow-up video just explaining how to sieve draft, giving some examples, showing how I would do it, and if that's something you're interested, please feel free to let me know in the comments. The document also shows the various rounds of the tournament and how it is organized. Um, first, the tournament will be open for up to 32 players. After that, the registrations will be closed. If we have between 16 and 32 players, there will be a best of three elimination. Basically, you play against an opponent, the pairings will be fully random, I'm not going to group people by ELO. It is theoretically possible for the two entire best players of the tournament to match up during the qualifiers and one of them be eliminated. The second best player can be eliminated in the qualifiers. That's something I'm prepared to, to live with. But, um, but yeah, uh, the pairings will be random for both the eliminations and then the main event itself. Uh, the tournament will be single elimination, meaning that if you lose a match, you are eliminated from the tournament. The matches for the qualifiers will not be streamed, they will not be cast on my YouTube channel, but every single match from the main event will be cast on the channel. If you don't have a lot of experience in hosting matches, in preparing everything, uh, we the document also provides how you are supposed to set up everything, the settings of the lobby, to ensure that players are playing in the correct settings. The registrations will be opening very very soon, and once you get access to the registration document, you will be greeted with something like this. Uh, the first section is completely mandatory, it's necessary for the organization of the tournament. You're supposed to fill in your email, Steam username, the username that you want to be known by, and your current 1v1 ELO. One thing to note is that this tournament, as I stated, is made by amateurs for amateurs. If your ELO is above 1200, you will not be accepted in the tournament, and please do not lie about your ELO, our goal is to have a fun time and probably in the future I will organize other tournaments for other ELO levels. So if you are going to miss this one, don't worry, there will be there will be your own time to shine. The second part of the of the form is just to confirm that you understand some important things, that you will respect your opponents, that you will not purposefully of course mistakes will happen, uh, both from my side and the uh, players but do not try to purposefully ruin the experience, do your best to try and schedule the matches, try, please collaborate, we are all amateurs, we are just trying to have a good time, and the more everyone collaborates, the better the tournament will go. And the final part of the form are some optional questions, and when we are watching the Hidden Cup, played by pro players, we know already how the players play. So the guessing game, is already underway from the start you already know can this be Harry? is this the viper here we have low elo players whose names are not yet popular so i include some optional questions when you can describe your play style your favorite unit type when you started playing if you follow the pro scene some more questions for fun this is to give you a little bit of an identity for the viewers for I will present your identity in the tournament draft and then everything gets scrambled and the players will be like oh maybe this player maybe this t-type corresponds to that identity this is not mandatory please do not lie here your opponents will not know who you are you will not gain any tactical advantage for lying and it will just spoil the fun so it, if you don't want to reveal these statistics it's better just not to answer but this is an, an element for fun and i think if people collaborate it will make the, inter the event a lot more interesting then at the end of the form you just need to, to register and one thing that i must note is that uh, 
I will close the registrations once 20, 32 players are reached, but there may, may be some delay, maybe I'm sleeping and a lot of players registered in the meanwhile. This means that you completing the form does not guarantee you a place in the cup, unfortunately. You will receive an email and that email will confirm you have been registered and you are player number something or sorry but you could not register this time and maybe I'm going to organize like a free for all with the players that didn't manage to register or something. Hopefully it won't be necessary but yeah just a warning finishing the form and submitting it does not guarantee you a place in the competition. But yeah that was it for the video I just finished editing it and it turned from a short video into quite a long one. I'm more used to streaming than making videos. But hopefully it could it was able to answer a lot of your questions. Hopefully you are motivated to register or follow the cup. I will be providing more content in the following days. And the most important thing of all is let's all have fun. Let's have good matches. Good luck, have fun, and I hope to see you at the Concealed Teacup.